Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to learn about importing CSVs. So we'll talk about what is a CSV very quickly. We're going to learn how to import it in Google Sheets with the built-in function in Sheets. But the most interesting thing is we're going to use Google Apps Script to create our own CSV import. This would work really nicely when you have a file that's updating itself and always has the same name. For example, I'll show you very quickly. We have in our drive a file or even several files with the name cities. What I'll do here is create a menu that when I hit import CSV, it will create a new sheet with all the data of this CSV. So I don't have to go to the same import process of CSV that is a bit long and time consuming. And the second really nice thing is that we're going to create a trigger so that we execute this code, for example, every Monday or every day at 7 a.m. so that you can have an automatic import of your CSV. I think this is where it could be most useful. But we'll talk during the video in many other ways where we could expand this. So I'm waiting for your comments to see if we do a part two. And then maybe we'll talk about exporting CSV and we could create a lot of different variations of this project. So I know you're going to love it. If you want to download this template, you can go to the Patreon page and download it and use it immediately. If not, just a subscription to the channel or leave a comment below. This would be very helpful. Without further ado, and just thanking my Patreons, let's begin. So before starting to get into the dynamics of importing the CSVs in Sheets, it's important to know what a CSV is. So we'll dive a few minutes in what is a CSV. CSV is nothing more than a text file, a text representation of a table. That's it. Where each element or each column is separated by a comma and each column is separated by a tabulator, something similar to hitting enter. And this is how Excel or Sheets recognizes it. it automatic, they automatically recognize it as a table and convert it to a table. This is the nice thing about CSV. But given that it's a text, it is very, very light. It is not a heavy file. So it is a very nice way of exporting and importing data, not only between sheet processing software such as Excel or, or Sheets, but also accountability software WordPress, most of the database management systems or SaaS have a way to exporting into a CSV because it's very easy to translate the database that they have in a JSON or whatever language to translate it into a table, but a very simple table that I, that is just text. So to better understand it, maybe we should open it in a text file. So I'm going to my Explorer and here you can see that a CSV it has the icon of Excel because I have installed Excel. And the difference is that here it has a comma so that I could easily recognize that it's a comma separated file. CSV means comma separated values. That's it. So instead of double clicking, I'm going to right click and open it with a text editor. And here you can see it's a table, but it's a text. So if I go and see the details, and see the my cities file and compare it to any Excel. It's very, very light, nine kilobytes. And it won't change that much if it's a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand rows. So it is a very nice way, portable way of having a very big databases in a text file and then you can interpret in Excel or in Sheets or whatever. So that's it. Knowing a bit about CSB will make our life easier in the future. And now we can start to import the file in Sheets. So now let's start our import. So we're going to open a new Google Sheet file and we'll just import our CSV. One way would be to go to our drive, upload the file, new, upload, We'll upload our CDs. I can go here to recent so I can see it. And if I double click, then I'll go to this uh, intermediate uh, window 
and I have the possibility of open it with Google Sheets. So this is the first way and you can see it's the same as in Excel. It already identifies it as a number, the numbers. How do you know? Because they are aligned to the right. When they're aligned to the right, you know that Sheets correctly is identifying as a number and the text aligns it to the left. It doesn't mean that we could not align the numbers to the right or to the left, but if you open a file for the first time and it is aligned to the right, then you know that the numbers are numbers. But you could also do some operations, for example, equals and these multiplied by two, just to double check. Perfect. So this is the first way. The second way is to import it directly. We are in our sheets, we go to file, import, and here, we already have a CSV in our drive, but let's pretend we don't. So we'll go to upload, browse, and select our cities. And the nice thing about this is that we have some really nice options. In the import location, we could replace the spreadsheet. This means that this spreadsheet will close everything and just have one sheet with the data from the CSV. There's an option to create a new spreadsheet, similar to what we did here. There's an option to insert a new sheet. Maybe I have here some data and I just want to insert a new sheet with the CSV. There's an option to replace not the, the entire spreadsheet, but just this current sheet. There's an option to append to current sheet. This is really nice if you already have data and you just want to add new data to a table we already have. Or we could click replace data at a selected cell. Maybe I want to start in A9 or A10 or whatever. Normally, the most used, what I most use is insert new sheet or replace current sheet. Let's hit replace current sheet. And here you can say if you detect automatically because not all the text files will be with the comma. Some are separated by tab or by maybe even other delimiters, but the comma is the most used. And we could say detect automatically if you have any other case. And finally, we have the option. I showed you that sheets automatically converts to numbers, but maybe you want to remove that option and that it doesn't convert automatically the numbers, the dates and the formulas, but I think it is a good option to have. So let's click import data. And that's it. Very simple. Actually, I don't know which is simpler. Maybe double clicking is simpler, but here you have more options as we already saw. Okay. This is how you import a CSV, but if you're here is because maybe we want to go one step further or create something new about these imports. What happens if you, for example, want to import every day at 6 a.m. automatically that you have new import in a new sheet? How could we do that? So this is what we're going to do today. This was just an introduction. The real thing starts now. For example, what happens if you want to import with some of the things that we so here, but you don't want to go every time and go to import and change the, the settings as you want, but you could do a button here that always import, for example, replacing or always appends the rows at the end, or you can use your imagination because the good thing about code is that you can do whatever you want. So you can adapt it to your specific needs while here you can, you have to adapt to the needs that sheets, the only options that sheets gives to you. So here in our untitled spreadsheet, we're going to give it a name, import CSV. Let's hit extensions, abscript, script, and we're going to create a function that mimics what we did here, the, the import. And then we can, you can start working with the customization however you want. We'll just do a couple of options here. A bit of zoom so you see better. The first good practice about this is giving a name to your project. That could be the same name as the sheet. So when you're searching for it in the script library, it's easy to find. Next, you're going to change the name of the function. Something I always recommend, even if it's a long name, something that's easy identifiable, what will this function do? So in this case, it's very easy just to say import CSV and then we can change the name if it's something a bit more specific. So the bad thing about this is that the file needs to be in Google Drive. So we could do a second part where you we can also have a pop-up where you can import it very similar to this, where you get file, import, 
and then in upload and you have this window we could do something similar but for now the restriction is that the file already has to be uploaded to our drive fortunately we already have one of those here we have these cities you have to you have to be careful that drive different than windows does allow to have multiple files with the same name so just to be careful because maybe you'll have duplicates so for now i'm going to delete one of these just so we don't have any problem so the first thing we need to do is to go and look for this file how do we do it we could ask the drive app class dot and there are a couple of methods we could use we could write file to see what do we have maybe i'll keep a bit of zoom out and hit enter a couple of times so i can see the the recommendations from google apps script i have various ways of getting my files the easiest way is to go by the name but there are many ways there's also a search way when we even if you don't have the complete name, you could search by some criteria, the type of file, a, a part of the text, if it's starred or no, and more things. But for now, let's keep it simple. We'll say get files by name. If you have the ID, it's also easier, but I think name, it's the, the winner for now. We have the name. It is called cities. Important to know, you don't need to include the extension when you use get files by name. We're just going to include cities. And in order to make this a bit more customizable, we could create a constant that is called CSV file name. And here we can include our cities. Perfect. This, given that you can see in the name that said, says get files by name. So even if we only have one file, this will return an object that is able to handle multiple files. This event is called an iterator. It's a very weird object in the sense that it only is useful in this context to handle files. So for education purposes, we're going to create a variable called file iterator. So we know that this returns a file iterator. Again, a file iterator may have one, two, maybe even zero files. So if I do this logger log with our file iterator, save, select our function import CSV and run it. Here you can see that there is a file iterator, but as you can see here in our drive, you may notice that there are many or at least more than one file that has cities on it. Let's delete these two files. And let's run our script again. And you can see that still we have file iterator, even though there is no file with the names of cities. So this iterator by itself does not do anything. It's not useful at all. So what we need to do is to use some of the methods of file iterator. The most used method is this dot next. What this does is that it goes to, to the specific files. So if I click, if I do logger log, file iterator next, and play, I should have an error. Why? Because there is no file that's named cities if we go to our trash and have one of these restored and play this again you can see that it did found it okay one other important thing here is that i told you that we shouldn't include the extension name but in this specific case the name is cities.csv so i'm going to rename it and remove this second this part and now that i'm i have two files if i repeat this command i will have here is the first file here is the second file if i do this again in the third one i should have an error because there are no three files 
I'm sorry about the the lesson on, on files, but I think it's important to know and this will be useful for you, not only for CSV, for, but for other instances where you need to manage files. So, but it is not practical to do this one, two, three, four, five, and seven times. So what it normally is done is that we use another method from the file iterator, that is this has next. Has next basically is a question that is asked to the file iterator that says, hey, do you have any more files inside you? Yes or no? So what normally is done is that we use a while loop that goes through our files until there are no more. So it asks one time, hey, is there one more? Yes. So now let's do this. And then, hey, do you have another one? Yes. Okay, so let's do this again. So let's save this and let's run it again. So here we have two files. If we had 10, then it will do this 10 times. If it has one, it would do it one time. If we have none, let's delete this again. If we have none, it won't do it even once, but we won't have an error. It will just do it if there's more than zero. So this is good. I'm seeing on some codes online that they skip this part, but I think it's important to understand and to know in the case that you don't have any file or that you have more than one. Perfect. So now with that explanation out of the way, I could take this file iterator next and we're going to save this in a file variable. Another important thing to take into account for this case where there are more than one, let's go to our trash again, and we're going to restore these two, is that one of the files one of these two files is not a CSV, it is an Excel. So in this case, when you have two names, one is Excel and one is CSV, it would be important to know the extension of the file. So let's see if our file has some method where I could get the extension or the mime type. Let's store it in a type and in a type variable, let's log it. You can see that one of them is CSV and the other one is Google Spreadsheet. So I need this one. So for in order for us to be able to process the CSV, well, we need to make sure that it is a CSV. So what we could do is create a condition that if the type equals, in quotation marks, this text CSV, then we will do what we need to do. If not, just skip it. This is just a precaution in case that there is an Excel file, a video, an image that has the same name as this. Let's save this and finally we can work with our CSV. For our CSV, we need to do two methods or two processes to the CSV. The first one is we're going to use the get blob method to, let's say, it's like breaking down the file more or less. So knowing that it's already a CSV, I can do this. I'm going to do file dot and we're going to use this get blob. It's a way of transforming the file into its more into its rawest form. It's like taking an image and converting it into a string, a text string, something like that. Let's save this in a blob variable. You don't need to do to save all these variables. For example, here, instead of type, you could include directly this file here but I think it's better understood this way. This is what I think. You can tell me otherwise, no problem. Now I have my blob. I need to do one final thing and is convert this raw file into real text. So we'll do blob and look, we need to convert this blob into a string so that then we could parse it as a CSV. So for this, we're going to look for the methods that have a string in it and it will be this get data a string and let's call this text string we're almost there the final part is to convert this string into a table we don't do this with a method there is no method for the string to do this we're going to use a class from google apps script called utilities utilities have many class to convert files and convert texts we're going to use one that is called parse csv to our, and we're going to apply it to our text string. And finally, this is the table data. 
This is an array as Google Sheet will easily interpret it. And now we could paste it to our file without any. You may have seen something similar in other videos. It's relatively easy. We're now we're going to connect to our spreadsheet app, to our current spreadsheet. And then here is where we could start using our imagination. What, what, where do we want to put it? So for now, let's store this as a, as a worksheet. And from then on, it depends on you. What do you want? So for now, maybe we could create a new sheet. It could be uh, an option. So let's do WS dot. I think it's create sheet or new sheet. Let's see, insert sheet. Insert sheet. You could give it a name if you want, or just do it as it is. And let's store this in an SS variable. SS is for a spreadsheet. And then in this spreadsheet is where I'm going to append all this data. So I'm going to do SS dot get range. I'm going to start in column in row one and column one. And then I'm going to go up until the size of my table data. For this, I'm going to use a property from table data that is called length. So table data is how many rows does my table has. And for the columns, I need to go to the first row of table data this, I do it by doing table data. I open this square bracket, put zero for the first row, because here in tables, we assume that all rows have the same number of columns. So I could ask the second, the first row, the second, the third, the fourth, whatever. But we assume that a table at least has one row. So I go to this first row and do the same length property to see how many columns do we have? And finally, we're going to do set values and paste our table data. And that's it. Let's save and let's run it. Let's give the permissions to Google Sheets, to the sheet app. Let's see, at least there are no errors. Let's see if it did what I wanted to do. So you could see that created a new sheet with the cities. Okay, one important thing to understand here is that if I have two files that are named cities, it's a two CSV files. Let's go to our trash and I'm going to restore this one again and I'm going to change the name so it doesn't have the CSV. And let's go here and you can see that this has how many rows? It has 129 rows. I'm going to go here and run it again. And what it did was that it created a sheet for each file, each separate file. So it created one for the first and one for the second. This is our first scenario. If you have two or three or four CSV with the same name, it will create one sheet for the first, for each one. The second possibility is that it appends each one to the next. So what I could do is this get range. I could put it outside of my loop through the file iterator. So I'll raise this, paste it here. And what I could do is to have my table data. I will declare it elsewhere here, or actually I'm going to declare a data called final data or master data or whatever. And at the end of this, I'm going to concat the table data to the final data. For now, this will be just a very simple array. And here I'm going to say final data dot concat, and I'm going to add this table data. Let's see if this works. And at the end, I'm going to do all of this, not with table data, but with final data. Let's run it again. And I need to define all of my, my worksheet and spreadsheet. I'm going to define it here outside of my while. So I don't create two spreadsheets. Again, save it and run. Actually, 
So actually the concat method returns a new array. So I need to save this in the same final data, overwrite my final data. Now we can save and now we can run. And I messed this up. This was not a square brackets, but a parenthesis. I hope now we're good to go. Let's see. And I've done a lot of testing, <laughs> but this, you remember that the first one was 129. Let's see this one, how many. So it's 129 initially, but then it starts adding the other files. So now we have 250, I should have. Okay, 259. Perfect. And if you would have five, then it would put all of these five. And this can give you an idea of what of another thing we could do in the, in the future is that we could have a complete, uh, let's say, a folder with 20 CSVs and they, it could go one by one and start compiling it one by one. So this is an, a thing that if you're interested, we could do it in a future video. Another thing that we could do is that there are many options we could try in the future. You could tell me if you want to, us to do a second part or not. You Instead of inserting a sheet, you could use a sheet that's already there. So for example, if I have this one, I will always have this one and then import it always to this one. It would be easy because here, instead of doing insert sheet, I could, let's, I'm going to comment a second possibility and it would be instead of inserting the sheet, I'm going to do ws dot get sheet by name and then there you would select which is the sheet that you want to uh, replace it would be this sheet 12 in quotation marks the only thing about this that you need to be careful is that maybe you should i'm going to comment this so we don't have errors the only thing you should be careful is that if you do this then we should erase the sheet by name, then you could decide. Maybe you want to append, but may then this would change a bit because it wouldn't start in row number one. This is option number two or replace. And if you do this, the best thing is at the beginning, clear all the content of the spreadsheet. Again, you can ask me in the comments if you have a specific questions or in the Patreon page, if you are Patreons and we can do additional videos and all that. Finally, what we could do is how to implement this. So the first, way to implement it is to create a menu. I have several videos where we do this, so I will go fast. So I will do spreadsheet app dot get UI dot create menu. CSV, I'm going to create it. Then to this create menu, I'm going to say add item. And for this to, to look nicer, I could drop this down here and the maybe even a little a bit back. And I could say the first item will be import CSV in new sheet. CSVs. Because remember that we are going to all of the CSVs with the same name. And as a second argument, I will give the name of the function to run. That will be this import CSV. Control V and Control Shift left. So I could put easy the quotation marks. And finally, dot add to UI. So let's go, we're going to save this. We're going to refresh our sheet and I should have a new menu here in a couple of seconds. Here I have it. So CSV and if I do import CSVs in new sheet, I have a new, the new sheet 13. You could also create, give it a new, a name if you want with the date or whatever. And now we have it. This is the first way. The second way I'm going to show you is that maybe I want to import it every day to add a new sheet every day. So we're going to go to triggers. We're going to add a trigger. We're going to choose the import CSV function. We'll leave this as it is in select event source. We're changed to time driven. And we're going to select if we want it once a month, once a week, every day, every hour. So let's do it for now, day timer. So we're going to upload this every day at between 6 and 7 a.m. Let's click Save. And now you'll have a new import from your CD CSV every day without you having to do anything. So I'll leave both options. You could do it manually or you could do it automatically. That I think is the best option. It also depends on your specific project. 
thank you so much for seeing up to here and please feel free to write down in the comments where do you want this us to take this given that at least more, more than 10 people see this video and if you are a patreon then you can download the template and use the script and ask me how could we modify it for this and for that much quicker thanks again especially to my patrons and see you next time